I'm Michael Key, Senior Dispute Resolution Lawyer, Harper James Solicitors. When buying a company, whether or not it's an acquisition of share capital or assets, the position uh, that a purchaser finds themselves in is a uh, caveat emptor, which means uh, buyer beware. As a consequence of this, um, a purchaser of a company will want the comfort of knowing they've got what they thought they were buying, um, which is where warranty is coming. In simple terms, a warranty is uh, simply a contractual statement in respect of um, certain assets of the company. Um, generally speaking, there will be lots of warranties given in respect of account issues, um, employment issues, um, environmental matters and lots of other matters. So why do warranty claims arise? Well, I suppose in very simple terms, um, the purchaser hasn't got what they thought they were buying, which means that ultimately they look at the warranty claims to see whether or not they've got any right to either unravel uh, the uh, purchase or have a claim for damages. What ways are they to avoid uh, warranty claims? Um, well, in the first instance, I suppose the uh, most fundamental way to avoid in warranty claims is by making sure uh, that the purchaser gives uh, sufficient uh, time uh, and credence to the due diligence process, making sure uh, that they have uh, properly uh, gone through all the warranty claims, if acting on behalf of a vendor, making sure they've disclosed against um, everything uh, possible in the disclosure letter. Um, something that both parties, both purchaser and vendor, need to give consideration to is uh, the vendor protection provisions um, in um, the agreement. Uh, the vendor protection provisions, generally speaking, will uh, govern how any claim in respect of a warranty is submitted, Quite often there will be specific procedures, uh, there will be specific time limits um, and more often than not there may be uh, specific uh, monetary limits in respect of a particular head of warranty claim or composite limits in respect of warranty claims in general. Um, often you'll find uh, what we call uh, de minimis limits, that's minimum limits as to an ability to bring a warranty claim. Uh, say for example five or ten thousand pounds for each head of claim otherwise it might not be economically worthwhile uh, bringing those claims. Um, I think a big uh, issue in terms of uh, considering uh, potential warranty claims and avoiding warranty claims and, and it's something which is very often overlooked um, is right at the outset when the uh, sale or purchase of shares or assets is being negotiated is actually considering the dispute resolution clause. Now, it's often a time when people are purchasing assets that they don't actually think they're ever going to be involved in a dispute. But often, dependent on how the transaction's structured, you can almost anticipate where the disputes are likely to come from. Uh, and consequently, you should be looking at tailoring the dispute resolution clause to make sure uh, that it best suits your purposes, whether you be acting either as a, a purchaser or vendor. Um, for example, in respect of um, warranty claims in respect of accounts, you may be deciding uh, to build a procedure whereby um, that's dealt with by um, expert determination through an accountant and you might want to give some thought to that kind of procedure because giving thought to um, the ultimate dispute can very often help save time and heartache in the long run.